pleasure today to be able to introduce you to Charles Vigliani. Charles has been named one of the 50 most influential Long Islanders five years in a row by the Long Island Press. Charles is a dedicated environmental advocate committed to developing innovative solutions to some of our region's most daunting challenges. His company, Long Island Compost, plays a critical role in Long Island solid waste management, and his products are used in high-profile public and private projects, including the World Trade Center Memorial Gardens. A recipient of numerous awards for his environmental work, Charles continues to expand Long Island Compost's creative reuse of valuable resources, now quietly focusing on clean, renewable energy and alternative fuel. In June of this year, Long Island Compost announced its plan to build the first anaerobic digester in the New York metropolitan area. They plan to accept 120,000 tons per year of food waste and convert it to high-end compost and clean, renewable energy. The $50 million project is expected to take one year to construct and when operational, will produce both electricity and compressed natural gas. Here today to tell us about this exciting new project is Charles Vigliano. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to come here and address you this morning. Um, Long Island Compost is attempting to do nothing less than absolutely transform the way Long Islanders and those of us in the New York metropolitan community process those. Um, but first, let me tell you a little bit about the company. For over 30 years, we've been managing organic waste, mostly focusing on vegetative waste, grass clippings, leaves, brush, etc., with a certain amount of um, discrete organics, mostly fruits and vegetables. We're Long Island. New York State's largest compost and recycler of, organic, of these organic materials. Um, and our end products have been used by, I suspect, everybody in this room knowingly or not. We're in over 600 independent garden centers. We're in every Home Depot in the New York metropolitan area, every Lowe's. Um, if you do any landscaping at all, or you hire a landscaper to do your landscaping for you, it's almost inevitable that uh, some of our products have made their way back into your homes. And it's very likely that the grass clippings and the leaves from your homes came through us to make the products that came back to your homes. So congratulate yourself for being part of one of the world's perfect recycling circles. As I said, we're very proud of our uh, engineered soil division, some of the highest profile projects in the New York metropolitan region. We supply um, very high-end engineered soils. Some of those projects, uh, you know, City Field, um, the High Line, uh, Brooklyn Bridge Park, and we're most proud of our participation at the World Trade Center Memorial Garden. But that's not enough for us. <coughs> We're looking at the way Long Islanders, the way Americans process waste, and to be perfectly honest, the way we process organic waste is not even medieval. At least in the Middle Ages, they took the food waste and they fed it to the farm animals. We're, we're terribly wasteful in terms of how we handle this. And the rest of the world, the rest of the civilized world, processes the organic waste through a process, by and large, known as anaerobic digesting, which is, in a nutshell, taking the material, put it in, putting it in an enclosed area, letting nature work much the same way nature works in our current term Woodrow technology, but in a controlled environment, anaerobically, without air, breaking down the food waste, the fats, the meats, the fish, the uh, vegetative parts of it, and creating gas. An anaerobic digester project 
in a nutshell, is a stomach. And just like in our own stomachs, we take in food, the stomach processes food, we create a couple of things from it, but let's just talk about the gas. We're going to take that gas, and we're going to convert it. We're going to make CNG out of it. We're going to take in 120,000 tons of food waste, 10,000 tons of grass clippings that we're currently handling in an outdoor environment, and 30,000 tons of fat soils and grease as well. And we're going to create a lot of gas. And we're going to clean up that gas, and we're going to do a whole bunch of things with it. Number one, we're going to handle the parasitic load of operating this uh, facility, which is a fairly substantial energy user. But the energy that gets produced by it will run it. In addition, Long Island Compost currently burns approximately 700,000 gallons of diesel a year. We're going to convert, um, it says 16 of our vehicles to, uh, um, to CNG, but uh, the reality is it's going to be more like 20 vehicles, and we're going to save approximately 400,000 gallons a year. We'd like to offset all of the diesel, but current technology uh, won't allow our large payloaders to run on anything but diesel. Hopefully in the near future, if there's anybody from CAT in the audience, we'll figure out a way to uh, convert those engines also. But, and you know, just, just to finish that, um, we'll also be producing a tremendous amount of excess gas that we're going to clean up and uh, be able to be used by third parties. Um, now, this project has a tremendous amount of greenhouse gas implications. 120,000 tons a year of food waste is 6,000 interstate tractor trailer trips. That's a lot of tractor trailers on the Long Island Expressway going over bridges and tunnels through uh, New York because, as many of us know in this room, there isn't sufficient capacity on Long Island to handle this. We're going to eliminate that. Very tough to estimate exactly uh, what that means in terms of uh, in terms of uh, greenhouse gas reduction, but uh, it's substantial. And one of our engineers came up with uh, 1.4 million miles. But from our point of view, the project's exciting because. When you think about it, what we're going to do is we're going to take waste, we're going to process waste, we're going to use the byproduct of that waste to power the vehicle that went to go get the waste. Once again, it's one of those perfect recycling sermons. And we come to this and we believe that we're in a position to be able to do this because we're not professors. I don't hold a PhD in biology. Um, I'm not an engineer. We're trash guys. My brothers and I started in the trash hauling business 37 years ago, and I spent the first 15 years of my life hauling cans from the backs of Chinese restaurants in Astoria and Flushing. We know what's in it, so and we're materials handling guys. We know how to separate what want from what we don't want. And we know how to do this in a real life way so that we can make it easy for either the residential consumer, should we get the interest of, uh, of the municipalities, and we're very hopeful we will have that, and the commercial waste stream on how to relieve the burden, if you will, of the generator from doing the separation will do the separation um, so that this will work in real life. And uh, we're excited, uh, we're happy that uh, we've been given the opportunity to come here. We're, uh, we're juiced about the project and uh, we hope you follow us as, uh, as we go from permitting to, uh, to actual uh, operation. Thank you.
hopeful to start the first quarter of 2014 and uh, depending on what the DPC and the town uh, have to say about this. Um, and uh, you know, uh, we are hopeful that we'll be taking uh, startup material by the end of 2014 and be fully operational first quarter of 2015. We're hopeful that, once again, keeping the circle fairly tight, that we can contract with all of the holders that will be bringing in the material so that they will convert their trucks to CNG so that they can come in, drop off the material, fuel up their truck with CNG, and get back to work. Once again, keeping it clean and tight and that, that perfect circle. And by the way, I, I think I forgot to mention this. We're firmly convinced we can save money doing this. This isn't the kind of thing that can cost money. Now we're in business, as I said, for 37 years and this isn't a government operation. You know, we appreciate the fact that we have opportunities for grants uh, from the, mostly from the state on this and we're very hopeful that the state shows its support for the project. But we'll be able to save money, both municipalities and the commercial sector, by doing this. Which is why we call it, you know, how it's good for everybody. It's good for the economy, it's good for the community, it's good for the environment. Yes, sir. The big difference with what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be having a tremendous amount of pre-processing. Um, the material that comes out of the wastewater treatment plant um, is fairly homogeneous. The material that comes in from the Chinese restaurant, the, uh, um, the Italian restaurant, the big store, the supermarket, um, varies. I gotta open that can. Uh, separate the plastic bag out from the uh, from the uh, rotten tomatoes and things like that. You don't have that in the wastewater treatment plant by and large. You just kind of screen out whatever uh, grit, etc., comes out. The basic principle is the same. The bugs in the digester have to be in balance so that they can fully digest you know, the material, extracting whatever gas there is available. Um, Biosolids don't produce a tremendous amount of gas relative to food waste. Um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert on biosolids, and uh, and we're uh, we have no intention of taking in, taking in any biosolids in our facility. Yes, sir. We would love to see a residential food waste pickup program, um, but actually there's there's a certain amount of resistance uh, on the part of, uh, of uh, municipalities on the matter. <coughs> fear almost that there'll be a backlash by uh, by the residents. They're forced to take another step. So we've actually designed in to, uh, to our program for us to be able to take in residential waste wholly as is, provided that municipality has a uh, single stream recycling program. Because if you take out all the cardboard, all the paper, all the metal, all the glass, um, etc. Et we'll deal 100% with the rest. So for example, the town of Brookhaven would want to uh, uh, institute an aggressive um, single stream recycling program. It marries perfectly 
with what we're doing, that the residents would only residences would only have to increase their recycling, which I think pretty much almost everybody's kind of into today. Um, and we'll take the rest, clean the rest, and you've shown uh, Brookhaven that they can save millions of dollars a year in this way. Thank you.